Hello and welcome back to District 6200's Grant Management Seminar. Again, my name is Frank Bradshaw and I am the Rotary Foundation Committee Chair for District 6200. This is module number three and it covers district grants. It is the third of the three videos in the Grants Management Seminar program. Here is how the seminar will proceed. First, you will watch a video as you are doing here. There are three videos in the Grant Management Seminar. After you watch a video, take the review quiz. You will need to use SurveyMonkey to take the quiz and the link to SurveyMonkey is found in the district's website. After you have completed all three quizzes, email me at the address shown on the screen. Give me your name, the name of your club, and your club position for the coming Rotary year. This way I will be able to give you and your club the proper credit for this training. Let's cover a few of the significant points regarding district grants. First, let's take a moment to review again what a club must do to be eligible to receive a district or a global grant for the upcoming grant cycle. To become qualified for this grant cycle, your club must agree to implement the club memorandum of understanding, have at least two club members participate in a grant management seminar, enter the club's Rotary Foundation Giving Goals in Rotary Club Central, appoint a club foundation committee chair and advise RI and the district office of the name and contact information for this individual, be current as to Rotary International and District 6200 dues, and all previous district grant projects undertaken by the club have been successfully closed out. In contrast to global grants, district grants can fund small-scale, short-term activities that address needs in your community and communities abroad. You can use district grants to fund a variety of projects and activities. Districts receive these funds as a lump sum and then distribute it to, to their clubs. As a club, you have a lot of freedom to customize your service projects. There aren't many restrictions as long as your district grant supports the mission of Rotary. Remember that the mission is to enable Rotarians to achieve world understanding, goodwill, and peace through the improvement of health, the support of education, and the end of poverty. Districts may use up to 50% of their district designated funds for district grants. While districts aren't required to request the full 50% amount available, District 6200 normally does do so. Let's talk about District 6200's district grant projects. The maximum grant amount to be awarded will vary between clubs. As I will explain later, the amount is based on a number of factors. Unlike global grants, while District 6200 encourages district grants to be sustainable, it does not require them to be. Also, unlike global grants, clubs do not need to create a separate checking account for a district grant project. Youth service projects are potential district grants. For instance, the cost associated with an Interact activity would be a permissible project. Unlike global grants, construction projects are allowed. Brick and mortar projects are problematic to a global grant project due to issues such as building ownership during the lifetime of the project. This is not the case with district grants as historically the projects have included construction of items such as park pavilions, school athletic facilities, and the like. Finally, partnerships among clubs are encouraged as up to four clubs may participate in a partnership in a district grant. There are a few restrictions associated with district grants and those are, first, a club is not eligible for a district grant in a coming grant cycle if its previous year's district grant is still open. A grant is open when a club has not filed a final report or it filed a final report without the necessary supporting paperwork. 
This is why it is important for the incoming club president to work with the current club leadership to make sure the club has properly closed out its current district grant. Second, a district grant cannot be used to help fund another organization's fundraising activities. Third, a, cl a club's district grant project may be for awarding scholarships to graduating high school seniors. However, the scholarship award must be paid to the institution in which the student chooses to enroll to ensure that the funds are spent as intended. Fourth, do not include cash cards of any kind in your district grants project. The purpose may be well intended, but there is no way to verify the funds are expended in the matter consistent with rotary requirements. And finally, district grants cannot be used to fund ongoing projects. Funds must be used for new club projects only. The grant amount range for the coming grant cycle will be from $500 to $2,000. This year, the district is modifying its criteria for awarding district grants. For the first time, a club's past three-year history of support to the foundation will be part of that criteria. In many districts, the amount of past giving to the foundation dictates the amount of clubs entitled to receive for a district grant. For example, it is not uncommon for a district to give district grants only to those clubs that have contributed to the annual fund. District 6200 is not that strict. However, having said that, the clubs that support the Rotary Foundation year after year are eligible to receive a greater district grant amount than those clubs who do not systematically support the foundation. Such a process is fair to all concerned. The foundation committee will also consider this year the funding match being provided for the project. A 15 to 25% minimum match from the club or non-rotary partner will be required. As done in the past, a member of the Rotary Foundation Committee will contact a club if its district grant application poses any problems or concerns. As pointed out in the first video, clubs must use the DAC-DB grant module and use the online grant application found in that module. It is strongly recommended that you watch the tutorial video provided in that module to better understand how to use the online application. Remember, the district grant application deadline is May 15, 2021. Any applications received after that date will not be considered. Here are the important dates to remember. March 5th, all 2020-21 district grant final reports from clubs are due. March 15th, the 2021-22 district grant applications are due. July 1st, the District 6200 block grant application will be submitted to the Rotary Foundation for approval so that funds to the clubs can be made available as soon as late July or early August. March 4th, 2022 is the closeout date for the 2021-22 district grants. It is time to act. Make sure your club has closed out its current district grant. Get your club grant certified. Go to DACDB grant module and watch the tutorial video and become familiar with the online process and get your 2021-22 grant application submitted by May 15th. As we have talked at the end of the previous videos, here are some resources to help you through the grant process. This is the end of the third video. You now may complete the module three review quiz. Thank you.